Hello, I'm Wilma Woods, and I wish you welcome to the service of the Word for Advent 3 at St. Giles Anglican Church in Estevan. Last Sunday, the candle of peace was lit. We light it and the candle of hope again as we remember that Christ will come again and bring to the world everlasting peace. The third candle of Advent is the candle of joy. It reminds us of the joy that Mary felt when the angel Gabriel told her that a special child would be born to her, a child who would save and deliver his people. God created us to have joy. The angel who announced to the shepherds that Jesus had been born told them, do not be afraid. I am bringing you good news of a great joy for all people. For to you this day, born this day in the city of David, a savior who is the Messiah, the Lord. We light this candle to remember that he is the bringer of true joy and everlasting joy. And we pray, loving God, we thank you for the joy you bring us. Help us prepare our hearts for this gift. Bless our worship. Help us to hear and to do your word. We ask it in the name of the one born in Bethlehem. Amen. acknowledging that the land on which we gather is on Treaty 4 territory, the original lands of the Cree, Ojibwe, Soto, Dakota, Nakota, Lakota, and the homeland of the Métis people. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all and also with you. Let us pray. We thank you, O God, that you have again brought us together to praise you for your goodness and to ask your blessing. Give us grace to see your hand in the week that is past and your purpose in the week to come. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Dear friends in Christ, as we turn our hearts and minds to worship Almighty God, let us confess our sins in penitence and faith, firmly resolve God's commandments and to live in love and peace with our neighbor. Most merciful God, 
We confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Merciful God, grant to your faithful people pardon and peace that we may be cleansed from all our sins and serve you with a quiet mind. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The kingdom of God is at hand. O oh, come, let us worship. And we say, come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and raise a loud shout to him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great king above all gods. In his hand are the caverns of the earth and the heights of the hills are his also. The sea is his for he made it and his hands have molded the dry land. Come, let us bow down and bend the knee and kneel before the Lord our maker. For he is our God and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Oh, that today you would hearken to his voice. The kingdom of God is at hand. Oh, come, let us worship. from Zion We thought we were dreaming Then the mouth filled with laughter On the tongues of the joy The Lord has done great things for us We are filled with joy Said, what great deeds the Lord worked for them. What great deeds the Lord worked for us. Indeed, we are glad. The Lord has done great things for us. We are filled. reading from Isaiah. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, because the Lord has anointed me. He has sent me to bring good news to the oppressed, to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and release to the prisoners, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favour and the day of vengeance of our Lord to comfort all who mourn, to provide for those who mourn in Zion, to give them a garland instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, the mantle of praise instead of a faint spirit. They will be called oaks of righteousness, the planting of the Lord's to display his glory. 
They shall build up the ancient ruins. They shall raise up the former devastations. They shall repair the ruined cities, the devastations of many generations. For I, the Lord, love justice. I hate robbery and wrongdoing. I will faithfully give them their recompense, and I will make an everlasting covenant with them. Their descendants shall be known among the nations and their offspring among the peoples. All who see them shall acknowledge that they are a people whom the Lord has blessed. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My whole being shall exalt in my Lord. For he has clothed me with the garments of salvation. He has covered me with the robe of righteousness as a bridegroom decks himself with a garland and as a bride adorns herself with her jewels. For as the earth brings forth its shoots and as a garden causes what is sown in it to spring up, so the Lord God will cause righteousness and praise to spring up beyond before all nations. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We respond with the song of Mary. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for he has looked with favor on his lowly servant. From this day all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has great, done great things for me, and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him in every generation. He has shown the strength of his arm. He has scattered the proud in their conceit. He has cast down the mighty from their thrones and has lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and the rich he has sent away empty. He has come to the help of his servant Israel for he has remembered his promise of mercy, the promise he made to our fathers, to Abraham and his children forever. A reading from the first letter to the Thessalonians. Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Do not quench the spirit, do not despise the words of prophets, but test everything, hold fast to what is good, abstain from every form of evil. May the God of peace himself sanctify you entirely, and may your spirit and soul and body be kept sound and blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. The one who calls you is faithful, and he will do this. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. This is the testimony given by John when the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, who are you? He confessed and did not deny it, but confessed, I am not the Messiah. And they asked him, what then? Are you Elijah? And he said, I am not. Are you the prophet? He answered, no. Then they said to him, who are you? Let us have an answer for those who sent us. What do you say about yourself? He said, I am the voice of one crying out in the wilderness. Make straight the way of the Lord, as the prophet Isaiah said. Now they had been sent from the Pharisees. They asked him, why then are you baptizing if you are neither the Messiah nor Elijah nor the prophet? John answered them, I baptize with water. Among you stands one whom you do not know the one who is coming after me. I am not worthy to untie the thong of his sandal. This took place in Bethany, across the Jordan where John was baptizing. This is the gospel of Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Rejoice, pray, give thanks, always. Perhaps Paul's version of wash your hands, wear a mask, and physically distance. I wonder if the people of the church at Thessalonica hear the admonition, the exhortation, rejoice, pray, give thanks, the same way as we hear, wash your hands, wear a mask, physically distance. This is Paul sending a letter to the church at Thessalonica, likely one of his first letters to a community that he has been leading. This community has been suffering 
grieving the deaths of some members, and they are anxious and worried. And here, Paul reminds them that they follow a God who has conquered death and who will not neglect them. And he comforts them that God will not neglect those who have died. Don't worry, be happy. Rejoice isn't just to be happy, though the definition of rejoice is to feel great joy or delight. Now that's pretty easy when things are going well, when the sun is shining and we're able to do things we love to do, to go where we want to go, and everything is going well in our lives, physical, mental, and spiritual lives. But if we're honest, we will admit that rejoicing, feeling that great joy and delight, is just difficult. And not just difficult, but downright impossible some days. Some life circumstances, such as poverty, abuse, physical or mental illness, mourning a loved one, or living through a worldwide pandemic, which has killed over 1.2 million people, can make it really, really difficult in the joy department. Yet we rejoice because amid all COVID mess, the brokenness, the sadness, and the chaos that we see on TV, read on the internet, we hear Paul's words, the one who calls you is faithful. We rejoice because we know that having been joined to Christ in the waters of baptism, we shall be joined to him in the ultimate victory, the second coming or advent of Christ. We rejoice because Paul wrote to the Thessalonians just a few verses earlier than today's lesson, God has destined us not for wrath, but for salvation. There's a second reason for us to rejoice always. In the midst of the world's brokenness, we do see signs of his redemption, signs of righteousness about us and within us that signal the presence of God's spirit in and amongst us. To know God is to see what God does. Christians continue to reveal godly and holy lives. The word is proclaimed, the homeless are housed, the hungry are fed, and acts of mercy take place as Christ is among us anonymously. How about locally? Well, Warm Welcome Kitchen, Blackbeard's Burgers for a Cause, Angel Tree and Hamper Association. Oh my gosh, that's huge. Just outside of where I am preaching now, there are bags and bags and toys and toys all ready to go. Personal and corporate participation for the community. These are reasons for us to rejoice. Sometimes we're so overcome with all the bad news that we fail to notice the small things and some not so small things that we should be rejoicing over. When Paul says rejoice always, he's not just saying cheer up or get happy. He's talking about keeping ourselves centered in the deep joy that knows, regardless of the darkness of the times, we are children of light rather than darkness not because we're enlightened, but because we belong to the light. Christians persevere not because of our steadfastness, but because of God's. God is faithful, full of grace and mercy. To rejoice in this always without ceasing and in all circumstances, how can we not? Pray without ceasing. This does not mean a life spent on one's knees in a monastery. On the other hand, time on our knees, whether literally or figuratively, must be a part of the daily rhythm of our lives if we are to be strengthened in our faith. Because it is in prayer that you and I are drawn into the intimacy of God's presence, and there we are nurtured by God's presence and power. One definition for prayer is conscious contact with God. Prayer has the power to nurture and sustain us, to empower us, to guide us, especially in the listening part of it. This is what we receive when we follow the psalmist's command to be still and know that I am God. The reason that prayer has the power to still the troubled soul is that prayer is one of the ways God gives us the gift of God's own self. But Paul says, pray, not only at established times, but at all times. Pray without ceasing. He bids us to live a life in constant dialogue and interaction with God, whether on our knees or seated at a desk in a chapel or walking along a road in a field. I find the outdoors an excellent place to pray, as well as on the city street, at a computer, the dinner table, in front of the TV, or with a newspaper in your hand, or at least your phone. 
When our lives are in such constant dialogue with God, all that we see, encounter, and contemplate is held before God. Here's the real power of prayer. It is our divine lifeline. It sustains, strengthens, and empowers us. I like the way one preacher put it. Prayer links us to life's power source, the creator, redeemer, and sustainer of life. As surely as the cord on any appliance links it to the electricity necessary for it to perform its intended function. Unplugged, it's useless. Give thanks in all circumstances. Notice that Paul does not say give thanks for all circumstances. There are circumstances in life that no one could give thanks for. Not every circumstance that comes to us is of God's making, nor is it God's will for us. Evil is real and present in our world. Yet no circumstance in life is beyond God's reach and God's power. God's power is such that even the evilest thing can be overcome, transformed and gathered into God's purposes. The other ultimate example of this truth is nothing less than the cross of Jesus Christ. Those who sought to destroy him through cruel and awful ways forgot about the power of God and therefore their action that simply created an opportunity for God to reveal God's goodness and power through the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Do not give thanks for every circumstance, but in every circumstance give thanks for the power of God, the power of the resurrection. Thanks that our hope is in God. Thanks that what we see or even hear is not all that there is. Thanks that the God we know and experience in prayer is the God of our salvation. Rejoice, pray, give thanks, always. Wash your hands, wear a mask, and physically distance. And so we wait. And thanks be to God. Amen. Let us confess our faith as we say, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, 
the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. In joyful expectation, let us pray to our Savior and Redeemer, saying, Lord Jesus, come soon. O wisdom, from the mouth of the Most High, you reign over all things to the ends of the earth. Come and teach us how to live. Lord Jesus, come soon. For strength and hope through this Advent season, as we continue to prepare for Christ's coming, we pray for our clergy and churches, for Rob, our bishop, Linda, our primate, Mark, our national indigenous archbishop, Greg, our metropolitan, Wilma, our archdeacon, Brian, our honorary assistant, Barb, our deacon. For the clergy, lay leaders, congregations, and ministries of the parish of All Saints Weyburn, for the venerable Alan Perry, general secretary, and the staff of the General Secretary's Office. For Melanie Delva, Reconciliation Animator. For Trina Gallup Blank, Assistant to the Bishop, Communications and Resource Generation, and the staff of Communications. Kyle Giesbrick, Director of Finance and Administration, and the staff of Finance and Administration of the Evangelical Lutheran Catholic Church in Canada. For Pastor Clay Mola and the Congregation of St. Peter's Lutheran Church. For the Falkland Islands, our Companion Diocese of Litchfield in Mayunga. For our ecumenical partners in the Lutheran, Anglican, Ukrainian Catholic, Roman Catholic Covenant. For our ecumenical partners, O Lord, and head for the house of Israel. You appeared to Moses in the fire of the burning bush, and you gave the law on Sinai. Come with outstretched arms and ransom us. Lord Jesus, come soon. For clergy and lay leaders, as they lead their congregations through alternative services during COVID-19. For health care workers and all who provided essential services through COVID-19 pandemic. For our frontline workers, especially the Estevan Detachment of the RCMP, and for support for members of our congregations as we adapt to the changes that we are facing through the pandemic. Lord Jesus, come soon. O branch of Jesse, stand as a sign among the nations. All kings will keep silent before you, and all people shall summon you to their aid. Come, set us free, and delay no more. Lord Jesus, come soon. O King of David, scepter of the house of Israel, you open and none can shut. You shut and none can open. Come and free the captives from prison. Lord Jesus, come soon. We pray for our church family, especially Glory and Bob Haynes and their daughter Candace and their sons. For me and my family, Kathy, Barb, and Teresa, and their families. Lord Jesus, come soon. We pray for those who are sick or any kind of need, especially Autumn, Frank, Greg, Gwen, Bishop Rob and his family, his sister Linda, and niece Nicola. Lyle, Terry, Ginger Anderson, Raquel B., Brian Brandon, Jody Bryant, Gail Clark Morgan, Mackenzie Delaney, Darlene Forbes, Wanda Fries, Dorothy Gates, David Genter, Luke Genter, Mike Gulak, Bob Haynes, Glory Haynes, Bishop and Michael Hawkins, Alan Hodges, Brian and Nicola Joseph, B. Lukey, Michaela McPherson, Leanne McCarthy, Arnold Newton, the Reverend Jason Richards, Les Saxon, Kim Smith, Candy Smythe, Wanda Stang, Dustin Taylor, Ed Taylor, Lisa Vandeveld, Edna Walliser, Megan Wright, and Tom Wright, and those we name silently before you. Come, Lord, with your healing powers. Lord Jesus, come soon. 
O morning star, splendor of the light eternal, and bright sun of righteousness, we remember today Cease Hitchcock, Guy Olet, Peter Yakimovich, Velma McCall, Christy Smythe Hofford, and Violet Kendall. Come and engage, enlighten all who would dwell in the darkness and in the shadow of death. Lord Jesus, come soon. O King of the nations, you alone can fulfill their desires. Cornerstone, you make opposing nations one. Come and save the creature you fashioned from clay. Lord Jesus, come soon. O Emmanuel, hope of the nations and their Savior, come and save us. Lord our God, Lord Jesus, come soon. We are the body of Christ. In the one spirit, we were all baptized into one body. Let us then pursue all that makes for peace and builds up our common life. The peace of the Lord be always with you and also with you. During this time of pandemic, when we cannot physically put our offerings on the plate, we ask that offerings continue to be given by mail, e-transfer, or pre-authorized deposits through your bank. Further information is on our website. For the gifts and offerings we receive, we give thanks and we pray. We pray together. Yours, Lord, is the greatness, the power, the glory, the splendor, and the majesty. For everything in heaven and on earth is yours. All things come from you, and of your own do we give you. We pray, God of hope, renew us in the joy of your salvation and make us a living sacrifice to you for the sake of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life. But above all, for your immeasurable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ. For the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies, that with truly thankful hearts, we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives. By giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. God of power and mercy, you call us once again to celebrate this coming of your Son. Remove those things which hinder love of you, that when he comes, he may find us waiting in awe and wonder for him who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. May the God of hope fill us with all joy and peace in believing through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. <laughs>